Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about putting graphics on Emma's bike. I finally got them in. I just got my graphics put on my bike and they look super cool. I got the yellow background again for B class. Looks really sweet. Goes with the rest of the body. Really in love with the way it looks. For my daughter's bike, I got pink backgrounds and white numbers, I think. It's gonna look really cool for her bike. Real quick, before we get started on the video, I have looked over my daughter's bike, and for her bike, the 2018 SX50 will require you to remove, I believe, three plastics. It's the front number plate and both the lower suspension shrouds just to make it easier to install the graphics on that bike. I am gonna be covering some tools that you're gonna need. It is absolutely necessary to have a cleaning source. I'm using this Brake Clean, not sponsored, but they work great. These two are absolutely necessary, as well as a pin. Any kind of pin, could be a needle, I'm using one of those, and some kind of X-Acto knife or just a really sharp box cutter. If uh, sometimes when they print the graphics, there is a little bit of extra, and if you put it on, you can just cut that little slip off and it'll be it'll fit a lot better to your plastics some extra stuff that could come really in handy for a lot of people you got a heat gun can't go wrong with one of those and a little squeegee i like using this one it helps get those bubbles out to prevent me from using that pin but first thing you do when you get new graphics is you want to make sure they sent you everything so i received them in a package like this inside the package was these graphics so I'm gonna lay everything out and make sure that I have everything I need. A few moments later. So it looks like I got everything for her bike. It's gonna be pink again with white numbers and it's gonna have the exact same style as my bike. It's the GoPro KTM Troy Lee design team. I love the way that bike looks. I'm really excited for her bike to start looking this way too. So first step, check to make sure you have all the graphics with you that's very important second step make sure you have all the tools that you need third step is a lot of these bikes they come stock with a lot of these stock plastic stickers right here so you can see that this one's starting to peel away first step is to make sure that you peel away all those extra stickers because you're not going to want to put a sticker on top of a sticker it's not going to look right it's not going to sit right and it's going to look junky So me being on the rear fender right now, this sticker, it looks like a sticker. It's actually printed into the plastic and it looks like this shroud graphic is the same way. So this one and this one are gonna have to stay on. Hopefully the graphics that I got cover it up. If not, eh, it's not really that big a deal. I don't think my daughter is gonna mind at all. I'm gonna get to the rest of these stickers now. All right, now that the stickers are removed, I'm gonna start looking at the bike and figuring out what would be the easiest to do with that part off. So I already went through the bike and checked. This is gonna need to come off because I got this cable running here and I'm not, I can't pull it away from this plastic piece and this has a sticker right here. So it'd be easiest if I just take this off. Same thing as this, I can't really get the sticker in here that well, so I'm gonna take this piece off. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take this piece off also, I don't really, care about taking two bolts out. Another piece that I'm gonna need to take off is the seat on a KTM 50, it's really easy. You got this little fastener right here, open it up, remove the seat and it's out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some tools and I'm gonna go ahead and start taking those plastics off before I do anything else. So on a KTM 50, Taking off the front number plate, it's just an eight millimeter bolt up here. And then it looks like on the bottom, I got five eight millimeter bolts on the left hand fork cover. And on the right hand one, it's just three. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my T handle, get my eight millimeter socket, and I'm gonna take these three panels off. All I'm using is a Motion Pro T handle adapter. It's got the three eighths drive socket bit on it. it really helps me put any kind of socket I need on there. And I really like the ones with the sockets already built into them, but this one just prevents me from having a bunch of T-handles that I don't use. Once you take your panels off, 
you're just gonna wanna take the hardware and put it back into the spot that it came from. Prevents you from mixing them up and putting them in the wrong spots. All right, now that all the panels are off, you can see right here, they are pretty dirty. So you guessed it, next step is cleaning all the plastics that all the graphics are gonna go on. So I gotta get all up in here, clean all this up, clean these up, all of this, including the ones that I took off. Now, you're gonna wanna be wearing protective gloves when handling chemicals. I work around them all the time. I'm sure my skin's gonna fall off soon anyway, so I don't really care. But make sure you guys are using your proper gear. I'm using this brake cleaner. It works really well. It dries really quickly. So use it if you need it. If not, rubbing alcohol works too. I was really hoping to get that for the video, but rubbing alcohol sold out because of the virus. So I have to adapt, improvise, and overcome. Cool. All right, so all you're gonna do, I like to grab two squares and use it for the spray. And then I'll grab one square and use it for the wipe. So I grab it, fold it in half, fold it in half again, grab the spray, get the rag all wet, then I'll take the panel and I'll start cleaning it off. If you have had graphics on your bike before, they are gonna leave some kind of residue on it, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you're rubbing it as hard as you can without actually hurting the plastic itself. And as you can see, it cleaned it up pretty well. I'm gonna take this dry rag now and just wipe it off just to get that excess fluid off of it, just so that way it's not sitting and melting the plastic. Now, I will warn you, if you are using brake cleaner, it tends to take the shine away from plastic. I kind of prefer that because it's, I feel like it etches the plastic just a little bit to get the graphics to sit and seal to it a little bit better. But if you like that shine on your plastic, don't use brake cleaner. Use like Windex and water just to get that residue off of your plastics. This is a really quick and easy way that I found that makes this work. Once you clean it, you're gonna wanna not touch it as much as possible because that's where your oils on your hands are gonna start getting on there and it's gonna make that vinyl not wanna stick to it. So once you're done with it, just put it off to the side and don't mess with it until you're ready to put the graphics on. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the rest of these and then I'll, guys, I'll bring you guys over to the bike so that way we can clean the bike up too. So upon inspection of this front number plate, I did find a little bit of residue from that KTM sticker right here. If you do run into that issue, you could just use your fingernail and scratch that away without digging too hard into the plastic and it won't leave any scratches. If you want, you could also take a little bit extra brake cleaner and just sit there and rub it really hard and it'll come off. It came off just fine with me using my fingernail. So that's just a little tip if you guys need or run into that issue. All right, those are all done. I'm gonna go over to the bike now. All right, now that the plastics are all cleaned off, the next step is going to be washing your hands. That brake cleaner can get into your hands, it can soak up into your skin, and then when you go and touch the graphics themselves, they'll tend to not stick. So you wanna make sure you wash your hands really well. I like using this fast orange right here. Really gets that gunk out, it helps out a lot. So go ahead and wash your hands, and then you can start getting your graphics ready to get put on. All right, now that I washed my hands, Gotta make sure that I dry them, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front number plate here. Again, make sure you try to touch it as least as possible and get all that dust off of it. Once you have your plastic, 
obviously just drop your vinyl on top and make sure it fits good. This one does look like it fits, so I know that this will fit good onto the plastic. I'm going to go ahead and start with this smaller piece right here just because it's easier to align. What I like to do is use the shape of the plastic itself to guide this vinyl into place. So I can see this cutout right here. I know it's gonna go near here, and then I wanna make sure that the edges aren't too far forward or off of it. So I'm just gonna slowly feel where it needs to go and drop it in place. As you can see here, there's a lot of excess up top here. There's not that much down here. So it is okay to grab that vinyl, peel it off and try again. Now that the piece is roughly where I want it, you can see that the shape isn't exactly perfect. That's where your X-Acto knife might come into place. All you're going to do is you're just going to lightly cut the vinyl and trace it away from the edge and just peel it off with that razor blade. Just like that. There is a little bit excess down here too, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. And as you can see here, I kind of cut it a little wacky. You can see that, ugh, stuck to my finger. You can see this rough angle in here. You don't want that because then it's gonna look like you actually cut into it. So you wanna make sure you minimize those angles as much as possible. And it's looking good. Taking that squeegee I have, I'm just gonna go ahead and push all those areas down just to make sure that they're sticking to the plastic as best as they can be. After that, you're going to inspect for bubbles. I can see a tiny one here. If it's close enough to the edge, you can just take your finger and push it out and it'll squeeze all that air out once it gets to this edge right here. If it's not, then you're going to need to grab your pin, you'll poke it, and then you'll pop it kind of like a zit. Look at that guy right there. Go on, get out of here. You're making a video, buddy. Moving on to the big piece right now. So again, easiest thing for me to do is to follow these edges. I can see this little divot right here and here. So the, those need to line up. And I'm gonna go ahead and place it down lightly, making sure that I line up all the edges, just like that. Obviously, it's not a perfect fit, but once I start pushing all these pieces down, these vinyls are very, very flexible. So you'll be able to start working all those bubbles and all those edges down slowly after you already put them on. All right, here I have a crease. So there's two things you can do. You can push it down, or I would prefer lifting it up and resealing it because then you're going to have kind of like you're going to have an actual crease in your graphics and that's going to look kind of janky. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. Like I said, you can do it. Just be careful doing it too much and making sure that you're not getting it dirty. And now I'm going to start sealing it down from the side that it's not sticking to on. So you can see that I'm walking these graphics back towards the ends of the plastic. Now that they're out of the way, making sure all these edges are sealed right and upon inspection I do have a pretty big bubble here since I'm pretty comfortable with removing it I'm gonna go ahead and peel it and then lay it down again if not take that pin pop it and then pop it like a zit all right I had to stop recording real quick my neighbor had to tell me something about my dogs they busted down the fence again gotta go fix that fence but in the meantime I did end up getting all of the rest of this to seal downwards taking the squeegee, working out all those bubbles. I do have some minor ones that I'm not really too worried about. I'm sure with time and heat, they'll start coming out on their own, like this one right here on the edge that I'll just work out later. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab the rest of this and I'm gonna start doing that. Cool. Those are done. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the camera and then I'm gonna start working on the more difficult graphics. With time, you might get better at it, but I'm always stuck with getting those little tiny bubbles all the time. So it just takes patience. And the next part 
like doing the fenders and the shrouds and all that it definitely helps having a heat gun so i'm gonna have that handy just in case but these three pieces are done i'm gonna go ahead and start doing from back to front since it's a little bit harder towards the front of the bike to get all those graphics to stick on with Like I said before, the best way to get these done and they still look good is to just take your time and be as patient as possible. If you rush this, you can just assume you're wanting it to look like garbage. So slow down, think it through, and don't rush and it'll look good. All right, the last piece is the front fender, and then I can start putting all these panels back on. So far, so good, actually. I had a lot more fun doing this one than my bike. My bike was definitely a lot harder. This one's actually turning out not that bad, so I'm actually pretty proud of myself. I usually mess these graphics up really, really bad, but you know, after not doing it for so long, and here I am doing it now, it's actually not that bad. So, one more to go. All right, I'm gonna grab the lower fork covers and the number plate and put those on right now. All right guys, finished and it looks fantastic. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. They look identical. It is absolutely fantastic. I love it. It turned out really good. It was a lot easier than I remember it. I was probably just antsy when I was younger and I just couldn't focus on getting this done the right way. And I was just like, ooh, new graphics. Let's slap these on. And then it looked like garbage. But here I took my time, I took the effort, and it looks great. It's got her name up there. 
number 48. It looks really good. A lot of you have also reached out to me and asked me how the bike sounds, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for you guys so you guys can hear that. Buttery. She sounds good. I don't know if I'm going to get an FMF for it or not. I probably won't just because she's probably not going to be into ra as much as racing as I thought she might be. I don't know. She's still kind of scared of my bike when it gets turned on. But if she does want an FMF, then I will get her one because she's my daughter and I love her to death. But this will conclude my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one. I'll see you guys next time.